hope everybody got their caffeine shot. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my vision on how to look at a tech from a data perspective. Um, let's see if this, this works. There you go. So, a little bit about me. I'm, my name is Olaf Hartung. Currently work for Deloitte as a specialist leader in the blue team. Um, I've been in InfoSec for, I don't know, at least more than 12 years. I didn't really count it. And I consulted a lot at banks, different governmental organizations. Um, I currently lead a SOC for, for a bank. Um, I do a lot of threat hunting, incident response, sometimes some compromise assessments, so it's always from a defensive perspective at least. I do work with our RITM a lot. Um, and I'm actually not um, 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 a, a real uh, security person in background. I, I, I actually studied uh, uh, at the Art Academy, and I'm a photographer by, by profession. I used to be at least, and now I shifted to, to the cool people. Um, there's some, some blogs that I write and some, 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 some code that I have, which I'll refer to later again. So everybody knows this, right? This is uh, the, famous, uh, the famous navigator, which I use basically every day. Um, and what a lot of people try to do is, is at least map their current coverage to it, um, which has its um, challenges already. But from there on out, they usually kind of are stuck where to go next and what to do. So you can, you can map some bears and some criminals and some pandas to it, and then you have some, some focus areas, so at least you can do that. Um, but from the other, from the other side, there's, there's more to do, right? So there's, there's all these great tools and data pools and, and things to work with, and usually you ingest a lot of stuff already. So why not leverage that as well? So what I try to do is uh, create a toolkit that is at least easy to use for everybody that's using Windows, uh, which a lot of people still do. Um, so I wanted to create an Excel sheet and a, and a set of PowerShell scripts to basically uh, ge generate a great JSON file which is full of information that you can load into the Attack Navigator and then work from there. So what I built is that Excel sheet. So basically I have a reference workbook with most of the Attack framework in there, at least the, the relevant information for me. Um, then I have a workbook which is, um, uh, again, the techniques, but then with the data sources and I rate them, which I will explain later. And then there's this, um, this monster of a sheet, which is never done, uh, which rates your, your basically your, your coverage on an event base. So if you focus on, by, upon, upon the, 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 the overview sheet, so this is every technique with the data sources that MITRE provides. I don't really agree with all of the data sources, but this is something that we can contribute to together to improve at least uh, the names and the coverage and so on. And I rate them basically on a weight. So per, per technique, from my experience, so you can adjust this if you, if you don't agree, I give them a weight between 0 and 100 per data source. So for techniques 0, 0, 1, there is uh, four, four data sources, and I believe them to be quite equivalent. Uh, but for other, for other techniques, some of them can be way more important to, to discover something upon that technique or make it easier to do um, than others. So, so basically that will be one of the factors in the calculations that I'll, I'll explain later. Um, and then on the sheet that everybody should be working with, mostly as a user, is this one where I uh, subdivide every data source and I add the, the, the event data uh, to it. So even every event ID that should be relevant for that data source. Um, again, this is a bit trivial because um, since the data sources are sometimes very high level, you can get a, a ton of event IDs which you don't always need for that specific technique. But in terms of usability, I chose now to do it this way instead of creating another monster sheet which probably takes week, weeks to fill and then nobody will do it. So it didn't really seem like an appropriate thing to do. And basically what, what I do then is I rate in terms of completeness, timeliness, and availability. Um, and completeness for me, in this sense, at least says something about the scope that you want to be monitoring. So if you have a thousand systems that are important to you and you only ingest data from a hundred, then your completeness is pretty low. Um, timeliness is, is mostly um, uh, relevant for, for the, the type of machine that you're monitoring. So if you're monitoring a lot of laptops, then the timeliness can be a factor. So you at least should be aware of that in hunting and your use case design. Um, and the availability is basically where, where is the data. So a high score would say 
it's for fully parsed and centrally stored. So it's, it's properly searchable and, and a lower score could be it's either local or you don't even have it at all. Um, and then it results into an end score, which is basically two times availability uh, um, plus uh, one times timeliness and plus two times the completeness. So timeliness is less relevant for me. It's still, it's still important, but you can accommodate to that. So basically, if you, if you use Splunk, then you can use the uh, um, index uh, time instead of the generation time. And then most of the time, you will be able to cover that. Um, and then what I do is I, I have this uh, set of PowerShell scripts. So it's basically just three, three um, functions right now. Uh, which will be expanded in the future. One is to get the attack JSON from the navigator, which has all the relevant information for me. And then there's the invoke attack update Excel, which isn't properly uh, PowerShell. I know I'll fix that. Um, but that, what that does is parses the, uh, the proper field names that I need, and it will update uh, the Excel workbook reference sheet for you. So the only thing that you then have to do is uh, open Excel and start working with the data. Um, and the last one is where, the most important one. It's uh, where it requests the attack JSON, where it goes through every technique, lists the data sources, will look at all the events that you rated, and then will um, um, do the math between the calculation of, of your uh, data source score uh, against every event ID. And basically, then you get a, a huge uh, a JSON file. Uh, uh, and if you import that, it will look like something like this. And the great thing about the navigator, I found out, is that it has a metadata field where you can basically just put in everything you like. Uh, so what I did is I, I have, uh, for the, this example, uh, you see the technique number, that, which is already there. The score is already there. I just fill it with the total score, which is a sum of all the, the stuff you see below. And then below you see all the data sources with the event ID numbers in there and the score for that number that you basically give yourself. Uh, and that number is a five as a max uh, multiplied by the weight number that I rated for that technique on that data source. So to also have a demo, I have a little video where you just see it working. So here you, in, you do the, the import module. It already warns you that one of those uh, uh, function name isn't, uh, isn't right away. Um, so that will be fixed in a new update. And then you can just download the JSON file. You'll see it there. Um, it's growing every time, so it's really cool. Um, then you can just invoke the uh, the attack update. Um, it will uh, you, you require an additional PowerShell module, which is basically uh, easy to install. It's uh, it's out there in the in the PowerShell gallery. Um, it will now open the, the the Excel file in the background, update that data sheet, and then it will uh, uh, basically update all the attack information. So here you see it's updated. And then I will request a JSON file, um, which uh, took me a while to type, apparently. Um, it's always good, right? Demos uh, that aren't live. Um, and, that, and now what it does is basically what I explained. So it opens all these worksheets and will all do all the math in memory um, and then would write everything to JSON in the proper structure. Uh, there's a template.json in, also in there where you can basically have a title in there. You can adjust the colors if you don't like my blue uh, theme. Um, and, and you can add some, some additional uh, uh, levels. So I, I only rate uh, to one to five, or 0 to 5. But if you want to have it uh, broader, then uh, you can basically do that yourself. Just upload the template and, uh, and you're there. And then if you import it, you get, uh, you get this, so this whole sheet. Um, and then also what, what is nice about this from, from an applicability standpoint is also where, where you see the zeros. You basically already know, OK, I need, probably need to get at least a couple of these event IDs and investigate a little bit how to, how to detect this. So but then there's, there's a couple of issues, right, which, which aren't always addressed, but I think are very important. You can't, you can't build detection rules for anything in attack, or everything, sorry. Um, so in my opinion, there, there are basically three buckets that you can put them into. It's either alerting, which you can basically use Sigma or build your own rules. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to hunt for, which you probably don't want to alert because then you swamp yourself with, uh, with events. And there's some stuff that you can only use for incident response or forensics. I mean, no, nobody's monitoring their BIOS or, or, or that kind of stuff. So as an example, there's also another caveat where, where the data source are now quite broad um, and the mapping is sometimes a bit um, trivial. So this is um, uh, the, the ideal circumstance of a, of a really good sysmal mapping. 
And if you look at this, then uh, yeah, it's a party, right? You can basically do almost everything. Uh, however, uh, this is probably, this is my system configuration currently. So, and then still there's always the aspect of, of how well it's really covered. But this is something that, that you have to figure out through unit tests or red teaming or all kinds of stuff. So, but at least there, there's an aspect that can be covered uh, this way through Sysmon. So there's, if you go back, there's, there's a huge difference, right? So this is always something that you have to keep in mind. Uh, hopefully the, uh, the, the, the data sources model will improve. So then it might be a little bit more accurate, but there's always, uh, there's always something uh, that, that you will miss. So currently this is, this is the way it is. I'm now developing extra sheets because Excel is uh, everything, everybody's passion. Um, so as I, as I mentioned, these techniques can be applied not always to, for detection rules, sometimes more for hunting, sometimes more for forensics. So I'm now rating them um, and I'm trying to work out a, a proper model to, to calculate them into uh, an applicability score basically. So, so maybe your data is really good but you can only use it for forensics, then maybe yeah, don't focus too much upon that if you're working in a SOC. Um, same for use cases, that is actually then more applicable to a SOC, where I'll look at um, the data score that, that is previously calculated. Um, I, I again look at coverage, but then more in terms of the whole visibility scope. Um, the upkeep, so if you, if you don't maintain your use case, it will become uh, irrelevant because the techniques are constantly evolving and, and they're changing. And also a general confidence score because you can, you can think that you can detect mimicats, but probably that's only uh, a one in a 20 times that you really are able to do this. So this, this is a, a trivial, it's a difficult one to answer probably because some, some people that develop it are, are highly confident, but if you, if you challenge them, the score might, might go a little bit less, uh, less, less high. Um, then again, there's also the detection bypass uh, uh, attribute in, in some of the techniques. I think it can be added to a lot more and also the, the, the detection rate, the detection um, names can be a lot more uh, elaborated. There are some, some outdated ones in there uh, like host-based intrusion detection, which I don't know, um, hardly anyone uses anymore. There's now, there's now all these nice EDRs and all, all these other uh, aspects, even the Windows Firewall. And, um, so basically, I want to rate those in terms of the same, the same score, so coverage, maintainability, and confidence, um, and that will add to uh, the detection bypass uh, stuff, where, where you can already calculate a little bit on, okay, I have these mitigative uh, or detective capabilities, how well does it help me in my whole uh, ecosystem? Um, and then this will be a lot of layers, so that is, that is nice, but then you have all these nice graphs but it's still a little bit hard. So what I'm also working on with a colleague is a data model where we envision a sort of bloodhound tool where you can just see it visually, where you just ingest all these metrics, you have the framework, uh, we have a model how common red teams or, or um, attackers operate, and then you can basically see, okay, if they get initial access and they're only in user space, what can they do next? I, oh, I have this mitigative issue, so why would I bother at that technique? I might focus more on another technique, basically. So it, it will help you from, from a blue team perspective, but also red teamers, it might also be really cool if they get access to a system, see what is logged, um, so they know what not to do, basically. So this is something that probably comes out somewhere this year. And um, I actually... Uh, <laughs> just start? <laughs> right.